So in the first half of the chapter, we learn all about how to take the percent of a number, how to uh, figure out what percent one number is of another. Now we're going to get into the real stuff. We're going to get into how are percentages applied in the real world. The application we're going to look at today is called percent change. So again, we're here we're talking about a percent, the ratio where a number is compared to 100. But in this case, we're talking about by what percent did our numbers change? So if you look at your, uh, I want you to, to kind of underline or box a couple things here. First of all, this is uh, the definition here, the ratio of amount of change to the original amount. So those are the two things we're comparing here. Now, to find the amount of change in something, if I ask how much did it change if I went from 3 to 6, you would say my change was 3. To find that, what I did was I did the difference between my two numbers. So my formula here, if I want to do amount of change to the original amount, my formula is going to be difference, subtraction, between the two numbers. And then if I want to know how much I change, I have to be comparing it to something. So if this is a ratio, I'm going to compare that difference. What's the best thing to compare to if you want to know how much you changed? Like if you want to know how much you grew this year, well, what are you going to compare it to? You're going to compare it to where you were at the beginning of the year. If you want to compare uh, how much your savings account grew, what are you going to compare it to? You're going to compare it to where it was at a certain time in the past. So when we do percent change, we're going to compare it to our starting number our original amount, the number we came from. So in these types of problems you're going to see in a second. It's where are we going from, where are we going to. We always do the difference between the numbers over the starting number. Okay? A um, couple of little definitions to write down here. Two types of percent change. You can either do a percent increase, which is how much did the original amount increase, or a percent decrease. How much did it decrease? A little example of that here. This is a uh, from this is an old map from '82 to '97 when this was a hot topic. This was uh, this map tells us the percent change in land area of forests during this time period. You can see um, in green are increases, and it tells you what percent. So if you look down here at Puerto Rico. All throughout Puerto Rico, you had an increase of 25, of greater than 25%. If it's like a lighter green, so if you notice right in here in New York, a uh, lighter green would be 5 to 25%, where it's white means there are little, there's little change. No change, there's no decrease, there's no increase. Whereas where there's uh, brown, so if you look here in Pittsburgh, got a lot of brown there. Again, keep in mind this is in the 90s. Um, if you look right here, in Michigan, that's the Detroit area, where you look in the Chicago land area, north of Chicago. Um, you look down here, this is a great concern today, down in New Orleans in the Delta area of the Mississippi. You have a large decrease or a percentage of decrease in land area or in uh, land area covered by forests. Um, you have the Everglades down here in Florida. Um, that represents a percentage of decrease doesn't tell us exactly how many trees were lost, but it tells you by what percent. The forest decreased by 5% or by 10% or whatever. That's just a one example of how percent change can be used. Let me show you how the formula works here. Two, two, two problems for you to, uh, to write down. Um, problem says find the percent increase or decrease, and this is how I want you to show the work. First thing i got to answer is, is it an increase or a decrease? Well, if I go from 16 to 12, that means I'm traveling from a higher number, number to a lower number. So this is going to be a percent decrease. I will let you do a down arrow for decrease, a little shortcut there. Equals. All right, remember our formula. It's the difference between the two numbers. So I'm going to do 16 minus 12 compared to the starting number. Starting number is the number I came from. I'm not going, I'm not starting at 12 and going to 16. I went from 16 and I, my ending number is 12. So number one mistake people are going to have here is they always just put the bigger number or the smaller number here 
in the denominator. It's not that. It's the number we go from. Pay attention to the words. The words tell you how to set the problem, but you have to read. So percent decrease, yes, you have to write it again. Next line down, I'm going to do the subtraction, okay? And then I'm going to grab my calculator and do 4 divided by 16. When I do that, I get 0.25. Now, you might notice right away, hopefully you do, that is not a percent. So my formula is missing something. That's a decimal. So my formula, just like before, remember we did is over of times 100? Same thing here, except now I'm not doing is over of because I'm doing uh, the change to the starting amount, the change to that whole thing we started with. So my percent decrease here is a 25% decrease. So I do, my numbers decreased from, by 25% of the original amount when I went from 16 to 12. Next problem it says from 15, so there's my starting number right there. From 15 to 20. If I go from 15, I'm going up to 20. That's a percent increase. So 20 minus 15. Okay, notice it doesn't matter. I just want to do bigger minus smaller up here. I'm finding the difference, so it doesn't matter which order I go in, as long as I label this as percent increase, percent decrease here. Um, from 15, so there's my starting number, times 100. Next line, do the subtraction. And then plug in 5 divided by 15. I get 0.3 repeated, so let's just do 0.33. And that gives me a percent increase of 33%. One more thing I want you to do here before we uh, finish up the video. Go back to your original equation, this original formula here, and let's add times 100. Because we have to remember that when we do this, it's going to give me a decimal, not a percent. 